What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video here on Madden 22 as today we're going to be rebuilding the Cincinnati Bengals. Before we get into the video though guys if you could leave a like subscribe if you have not already it would really really help out the channel and honestly the support over here has been awesome. I really really appreciate you guys the people that have been watching every freaking day. It means the world to me. Honestly I've had a ton of fun doing Madden rebuilds it's just like a breath of fresh air for me so i really appreciate you guys support over here and we're gonna be grinding over here just like we do on my 2k channel all the time but the cincinnati Bengals have to feel pretty good about themselves especially after watching the baltimore ravens go for two and end up losing now the pittsburgh steelers did win but that's not that big of a deal for cincinnati uh but looking at this team uh we're gonna go ahead and generate the best lineup real quick that way we know like what we need and what we don't need so uh looking at this offensive line definitely a lot of work we have a Tied in with star development, we obviously have Jamar Chase, who they opted to draft over an offensive lineman when everyone thought they should draft an offensive lineman. We have Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, wide receivers. Weapons on offense isn't actually horrible at all. Uh, Joe Mixon, obviously. Uh, Joe Burrow, we actually have a quarterback today, so we don't even have to worry about that. Uh, CJ Uzama is 28 years old. Okay, so maybe we'll need a tight end eventually. And then our only left tackle is 23. So, okay, at least we have somebody we can rely on on the offensive line. Everything else is just kind of in shambles. But like I said, wide receiver core is great. Uh, Joe Mixon's great. And then obviously Joe Burrow is fine as well. And then defensively, uh, we have Jesse Bates, I believe. Or is this John Bates? No, it is Jesse Bates. So we have 24-year-old free safety Jesse Bates. We can definitely... Uh, we have Ricardo Allen over here with 29-year-old uh, star development. So that definitely is up there in age. Mike Hilton, uh, 27. Just kind of trying to look at these ages because you guys know I like to... Uh, you know, kind of stay young for the most part. So guys continue to develop. DJ Reader, okay, not too shabby. Then Hubbard is a 26 year old. So um, honestly, defensively, there's only like really one guy. Uh, left outside linebacker is 25. So that's actually not too bad either. Yeah, there's only like one guy that I feel like we're gonna rely on for the future. And that's Jesse Bates. So definitely gonna be a lot more work to do than I thought there was gonna be. But we're gonna go ahead and obviously get started with some trades to improve the team a little bit. Today's video is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is a DFS player props website that allows you to go over or under on players' projections. You're facing no one in the world but yourself and the numbers. So let me go ahead and show you a few examples of how it works. So on this example, I went for a flex play on Debo Samuel, Cordell Patterson, LaVisca Cheneau, and David Johnson, who were all able to hit or go under the numbers, which led to me getting $170. That's just one example. And here's another example where I didn't actually get everyone correct, but I still didn't walk away with nothing. Aaron Jones was able to hit over his fantasy score. Chase Edmonds got over 10 fantasy points, and Mercedes Lewis got under 18 and a half receiving yards. But unfortunately for me, DeAndre Hopkins did not get a touchdown in this game. If you do decide to sign up, my link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES. They are offering 100% deposit match up to $100. I actually didn't expect the Giants to accept this immediately, but they did. We got ourselves a brand new tackle in Andrew Thomas, who I think actually has uh, hidden development, if I'm not mistaken, or no, he has star development. Okay, that's still fine. That's perfectly fine. So now we have two tackles we're going to rely on for the future. The next trade we're going to be making is sending a defensive tackle with Normal development over for a middle linebacker with star development, also getting a seventh round draft pick. Nothing crazy, but uh, we went ahead and upgraded the middle linebacker spot that we needed to make. Then we're going to be sending Hendrickson and a third round draft pick over to the Carolina Panthers for Hassan Reich to be our brand new outside <laughs> linebacker. And last but certainly not least, we're going to be trading Ricardo Allen and a third round draft pick over for a center and Eric McCoy with star development. So, that is all the trades going to be doing in season number one. So we've already kind of improved the roster just a tad bit. So this is what the offense looks like. So we get, we're able to grab two brand new offensive linemen to help protect our franchise quarterback and Joe Burrow, obviously. Uh, we still have plenty of weapons at wide receiver. Uh, tight end, you know, maybe could use an upgrade in the offseason. We'll work on that. And then defensively, this is what we look like now. The reason why I traded away Ricardo Allen is because we had Von Bell right behind him, who was a little bit younger than him. So I thought it made sense to go ahead and trade him away. Our right end is certainly definitely weaker, but other than that, linebackers look a little bit better. Uh, corners aren't too bad. So, I mean, not a not a bad looking roster. I could definitely see this team potentially making the playoffs. But, of course, uh, we're nowhere near done rebuilding this team. But I feel like that was a decent start to this rebuild. So, I sent to the midseason mark, and I'm going to be honest. We were 3-4. and four. I didn't really expect much this year. Then somehow we came out and won our division. So, W, I would say. Very big W. And we're going into the offseason with, like, 90 million dollars in cash space like there's so much we can do 
to improve this team. It's not even funny. But we made the playoffs at 10 and 7. And we're not even close to being done to where we want to be. So that is huge, obviously. Like, that's big. So I do want to look at the lineup real quick. I'm going to assume Jamar Chase might have gotten superstar development, but we'll see. He did. Yes, that's what I love to see. Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase both have superstar development. Joe Burrow's up to an 89 overall. Big W. Tyler Boyd over there at an 85 overall. And then defensively, uh, this is what we look like over here. Jesse Bates, we were able to resign. Uh, but everything else is looking pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with how the year went. Obviously, did not expect uh, 10 and 7 this year. I thought we were going to be uh, maybe like 9 and 8, but. 10 and 7 will definitely take uh, 37 passing touchdowns from Joe Burrow and 11 interceptions. Great, great year out of him. Rushing wise, we had 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns from Joe Mixon and receiving Jamar Chase five touchdowns and then 14 touchdowns from Tyler Boyd and Jamar Chase had 1,000 yards on top of that. It's not a crazy year, but he still did get superstar development, so we'll definitely take that. Uzama, 799 yards. We did resign him as well. I'm not convinced on him being like my number one tight end, but... Um, if we don't get another tight end, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if he was, to be honest, especially if he got a productive year out of him like that. So um, let's go ahead and sim to next week. I'm not going to worry about going into these press conferences. We're just going to go straight to next week and just see if we can go to the divisional round. We are playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, a division rival who also went 10 and 7. But like I said, I'm really happy with how the year went, regardless of what happens. And we did lose 20 to 13, which is fine. Uh, now we have $55 million, it says, in cash space, but I believe that number is going to jump up to $90 million. So we should have a ton, a ton of money. So let's get straight to the offseason now that we've been eliminated officially. And we have uh, some work to do, not going to lie. So going into the offseason, $79 million in cash space. So not 90 but $79 million. So that's huge, obviously. Very big. Super Bowl, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs ended up beating the Dallas Cowboys and we can go ahead and take a look uh everything else Kyler Murray MVP Nick Sirianni is your coach of the year Chris McCaffrey offense player of the year Miles Garrett defense player Trevor Lawrence and then Aziz Ojolari and of course Patrick Mahomes wins Super Bowl MVP over the Dallas Cowboys all right next week is gonna be the resigning stage so there was one player we couldn't come to an agreement to uh but even if he even if we did lose him in free agency it wouldn't be that big of a deal I wouldn't be you know, pulling my hair out or anything because it's just like an uh, 76 overall defensive tackle. He does. A, oh, uh, wow. Hassan Reddick's actually showed up here last second. So I'm glad I looked at this. I didn't realize Reddick was even a free agent. He wasn't here earlier. So um, that's going to be big, uh, you know, money we're going to have to spend. And boom, we get Hassan Reddick back, which is great. Uh, but this guy, Larry, uh, I think we might just test free agency because he wanted more money. Uh, but we're going to go into cat. We're going into the free agency with $66 million. So I feel like we could potentially just go elsewhere uh, instead of resigning him. So $66 million in cow space. Let's see what we can do. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the roster. Um, obviously, we don't really need wide receivers. We need defense more than anything. And then some offensive line help. Uh, weapons on offense are too bad other than maybe tight end. But offensive line could definitely use some work. And then defensively. Uh, we need some defensive linemen. Uh, the secondary isn't too bad either, uh, but we'll see if we can maybe upgrade that. Maybe a strong safety wouldn't be terrible to go ahead and grab in free agency. But defensive linemen, a right end. So we need a, basically a defensive tackle and a, you know, end rusher. So we'll go ahead and figure out what's available in free agency and kind of go from there. Uh, if there's no one here, then we won't spend too much. We'll roll our cast base in the next season. So uh, we have Devontae Adams, Tyron Matthew. I've almost never... Seen Tyron Matthew hit free agency. What would his cap it be if we did want him? I'm just curious. His cap would be 12 million. Not too bad, actually. I've never seen Tyron Matthew here in the first free agency wave. So we might actually have to go for that. I like I said, I did kind of need an upgrade at strong safety. So Tyron Matthew would be kind of interested in bringing 97 overall. He is 30 years old, but I think it would be a really nice improvement on the defense. Um, Tyron Armstead, I'm not going to try, bro. Every time I try to get him, it just never works out. Uh, Marcus Williams, we don't need a free safety. Uh, we don't need a wide receiver. So um, other than really Tyron Matthew, I'm not really seeing anything that jumps out at me. Like I said, we do need defensive linemen really badly, but I'm not really seeing a ton of defensive linemen. We also need offensive linemen. So I guess I'll go ahead and just keep looking just in case. Uh, Austin Corbett might be one other guy I would be interested in bringing in. 26 years old, we do need a guard. Uh, but other than that, we literally might have two offers going into this free agency. So... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and offer Austin Corbett a contract because we do need offensive line help. I'm going to give him a multi-year deal and we'll give him like uh, 5.6. Let's see what uh, that's 107 total points. That blows everyone's offer out of the water um, uh, other than Jacksonville. 
and the cap hit wouldn't be too terrible so i'm happy with that and i think i am and then i guess there's dalton schultz down here he is a normal development tight end okay uh so tanyan is star and then i guess i'm gonna just take one last look um we don't have a kicker oh we do have a kicker never mind okay uh darius williams we don't really need a corner that badly linebackers are fine defensive line is kind of where we lack but the fact that tyron matthew is here i think i'm gonna try to get tyron matthew um let's see what that offer hits us at um that would be a hundred total point offer that would be his number one offer so i'm gonna go ahead and pay him just a little bit more more money just to secure him because like i said we have the cap space to do it so 105 total points number one offer out of everybody if we bring in tyron matthew that'll be big that's gonna be a big acquisition to this defense so please please tyron matthew accept the contract man i'm begging you and austin corbett rejected that's unfortunate because we did need an offensive lineman we could have paid him a little bit more but we did get tyron matthew so that is huge we got a brand new strong safety now that makes von bell a little bit more expendable and then defense uh, offensively you still need offensive line help obviously but the fact we have tyron matthew the strong safety that's a dude our safeties are really good that's huge so i think the only other thing we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and probably trade away von bell for maybe a defensive lineman because that's definitely something we need i'm gonna try to see if i can finesse the chicago bears they have green interest in von bell i need a right in and a right guard so let's go ahead and see if they would accept this if i sent this and boom just like that we were able to knock out two key positions that we needed and we got rid of some depth obviously at the strong safety uh but with injuries off that doesn't really matter so now the offensive line looks a little bit better austin corbett man if we would have gotten him that would have been huge the offensive line would pretty much been solved defensively we did get a defensive lineman to help out uh what we had and then we do need a defensive tackle really badly so uh maybe we go ahead and trade our first round pick for a defensive tackle just to be safe I could go in the draft and obviously trade or I could obviously like sign a, a draft defensive lineman but I just don't trust I don't really and we probably don't have a high draft pick anyway so I don't really trust the draft uh I don't really trust my drafting skills I should say um maybe when we do realistic rebuilds obviously I won't be doing this but I'm gonna go ahead and trade my first round pick I'm gonna get a defensive tackle that I know will be good so we're getting ourselves another superstar X Factor. We are giving up quite a bit in order to make this happen. We're getting Vita Vea from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 96 overall, trading two first round picks and a second round pick as well. But that gives ourselves a great team and we still have remaining cap space. That is going to be it though. That's going to be it this offseason. Uh, we still need a guard. So I might sign one small, you know, cheap guard for free agency. But other than that, man... This defense looks a lot scarier now. Tyron Matthew, Vita Vea, and Jesse Bates as all. And we also have L. Wilson who went to Superstar Development. I didn't even know Logan Wilson, I should call him. Uh, but one last move. If we can get like a guard who's just somewhat decent free agency, we have $51 million. We're going to have a lot of people to talk to next offseason. I know that for sure. Uh, but left guard. Um, okay, so we have a 77 overall, 29-year-old. And then we have David DeCastro, Will Hernandez. Okay, so looks like our best uh, chance will be getting Ted here. Um, not going to be like a significant. Obviously, he's not going to be a huge part of the future, but we can grab him to fill out for that defense, you know, that uh, left guard for now. That'll be fine. So let's go ahead and sign him real quick, hopefully. And then that'll be it, man. So just like that, we had ourselves, uh, boom, just like that. We have an 88 overall team. W of an offseason. Obviously, we have no draft picks, so we can just go straight into this next season. The defense looks a lot better after the moves we just made. So, still kind of a big gaping hole at the left guard spot, but we'll figure that out. But defense, man, I'm in love with this team. We should we should be really good next year, hopefully. Hopefully, this was all worth it. Tyron Matthew and Vita Vey in the same offseason huge w so season number two comes to an end and we did finish 11 and 6 and we are in the playoffs going up against the new england patriots so we'll definitely take that uh jamar chase looks like he's about to be up to an 87 overall so i do want to go ahead and take a look at the lineup real quick just before we jump in we were able to uh re-sign everybody we're not gonna have a ton of cap space going into this next offseason unfortunately so really like i said the only position of need that we really were desperately like needing is a left guard so we'll have to you know work on that but tyron matthew uh vita vea everyone else on you know the defense is looking fine uh i do want to look at the stats real quick obviously before we go ahead and jump against new england patriots we're going in as an 88 overall stats and awards let's go ahead and check out how this went uh joe burrow with 28 and 8 very efficient year 71 percent completion rating and then rushing uh 1700 yards and 25 touchdowns from joe mixon 
that's an MVP kind of season for me. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but I feel like that's an MVP, MVP season. Both our wide receivers went over 1,100 yards, eight tutties, and seven. And then T. Higgins with three. Ozama with six. And then defensively, if we go ahead and take a look at this. Interceptions-wise, we had uh, four from uh, Chidobi Awuzi. And then six, we had uh, Awuzi, I think is actually how you say it. But uh, Vita Vea, the guy we brought in here for... A lot of draft picks, uh, 11 sacks. So we'll definitely take that, obviously. Um, love to see the production. All right. Well, you know what matters is playoff wins. That's what matters. So can we win in the wild card? Come on. Can we beat the New England Patriots? We get this. 11 and 6, and we lost 23 to 17. Damn. Okay. So we've made the playoffs back to back, but we have yet to do anything in the postseason. So not a good track record our contract has been extended again but the Bengals curse just keeps on continuing no playoff wins for this team all right well let's uh get to the offseason i like i said i don't think we're gonna have a the ability to do a ton really what we need to do is upgrade the left guard spot we have 34 million dollars so that's not terrible that's gonna give us the ability to do a couple things i uh, could probably sign like maybe two or three free agents which uh, we'll see kind of based off how we want to do it. Did Joe Mixon win MVP, by the way? Because what he did was kind of amazing. And Offensive Player of the Year, Mahomes. So, no. Okay. So, no Joe Mixon. And then Cowboys won the Super Bowl over the Chiefs. So, Super Bowl rematch, but the Cowboys won this time. All right. So, there was one player we didn't come to an agreement with. Uh, and that's going to be somebody we definitely want back. So, yeah. We're probably going to only be able to sign at least one or two players in free agency. And that's it. We need a left guard more than anything, as you know. Uh, ready to negotiate. Uh, we have Eric McCoy, uh, which that's going to be important because obviously we need to bring our set or have our center here. So uh, the contract length is good, but that's it. So we're going to obviously uh, pay him a little bit more money. So let's go ahead and boost this up because we need him back. So hopefully he accepts this and boom, we get uh, Eric McCoy back. So now we're going to free agency with not a ton of money. But one thing we can do is we can look at our salaries real quick and see if there's anybody on the roster making money that shouldn't be. Uh, so total years, we have obviously Vita Vea making a big amount of money. We paid him at the midseason mark. Jesse Bates, uh, well-deserved. Um, we have Sh uh, Hubbard making 42 savings would be 4 million. So we only save like $4 million. Uh, Eric McCoy, obviously we just paid the man actually. Joe Burrow, not getting paid much. Yet. Yeah, there's really no one that like strikes me as someone that's making like too much money. All these guys are kind of important. Maybe the left guard. Uh, if I did cut him, I would save four million dollars so i actually am going to do that i'm just going to go ahead and release the left guard uh we'd freed four million dollars in cap room with that that was just kind of a bridge left guard so we're going to go straight to free agency now um actually no we're gonna now go to free agency with 27 million dollars in our pocket i think that might boost up to 31 million no it's 28 million okay so like i said we only have little little room to do anything so you have cream hunt zary smith uh stefan to it Casey Hayward, Tony Pollard, Miko Hardman. We need a guard, and I'm not really seeing a guard available. Uh, we have a tackle, but not a guard. Which we need a guard more than anything. More than anything right now, we need a guard so badly. So, huh, what are we going to do here? Honestly, I'm almost convinced that we should probably... Aaron Rodgers, Darius Smith, Stephon Tuitt as a, a left end. You know, I'm almost convinced we should try to go for a crazy free agent and then trade whoever we sign, obviously, to for a left guard. That's what I'm thinking, or for a guard in general. So that might be the move. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going for, I'm going for Stefan to it. I'm gonna do it. His cap it doesn't look like it'll be that. Actually, it it would be big, but uh, I'm gonna go for him. I'm gonna go for Stefan to it, and we're gonna bring him in. So I don't even know our left in is. A 79 overall. So yeah, this would be a big, big upgrade. So let me pay him just a little bit more money just to make sure we secure him. So we'll go ahead and have that. That's a 102 total point offer. That kind of runs away a little bit. So now we bring him in. That'll upgrade the defense just a little bit more. And then we could trade the left in we had for a left guard. That's big brain energy right there. And he accepted. So that's what we needed to see. Now we trade for a left guard. So just like that, we got ourselves an 88 overall left guard. We're basically going for the Super Bowl this year. So, and I also want to show you guys this because uh, offensively, Joe Mixon is a superstar X factor. And now the offensive line looks a lot better. Defensively, look at this team. We have three superstar X factors and we have two superstar. Let's go, baby. Let's freaking go. I mean, if this team 
can win the Super Bowl. I don't know. I just don't know. The game's rigged, I guess. But three Superstar X Factors. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. Vita Vey, and of course, we upgraded defensive line. 88, 82 overall and above on defensive uh, on the defensive line. So uh, we brought in an 88 overall left guard. Uh, the only other thing we could do is sign a fullback, sign a backup quarterback, and that's about it. We have $16 million left over, so not a ton of ability to do anything. So for the fullbacks, really no one here, so we're not going to worry about that. All right. Backup quarterback uh, is only going to be like the only thing. Do we want to bring in Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Garoppolo? We have Taylor Heineke, the legend of Taylor Heineke. As a Washington fan, I love Taylor Heineke a lot. Just not really sure if he's the future of our team, but I do like what he brings each and every week. So if we're bringing in Taylor Heineke, we're guaranteed to win the Super Bowl. It's it just got to be the thing. Legend of Taylor Heineke has come to Cincinnati, 30-year-old, 68 overall. Here we go, baby. We're going into next year with three superstar X factors, one on the offense with Joe Mixon, and the legend of Taylor Heineke. So season number three comes to an end, and we finished up 11 and six. Nothing crazy. We are playing the Houston Texans. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. If we end up losing to the Houston Texan Texans, I'm gonna be a little upset. Deshaun Watson shouldn't even be in the league. Just kidding. I mean, I don't really have any ill will towards Deshaun Watson. Just hope that situation gets solved. But looking at the roster real quick, um, let's see if anyone's maybe jumped up to. No, Joe Burrow's up to a 93 overall. Jamar Chase in 91. This is what the offensive line looks like. All good there. Defensively, again, we have a lot, a lot of good players defensively. So let's go ahead and take one last look at the stats. And hopefully, like I said, this is our year. So I would at least like to win a playoff game for this Bengals team because the Bengals do have a curse where they have not. Um, every time they got the playoffs with Andy Dalton, they lost every time. Joe Mixon, 22 touchdowns receiving wise, 11 touchdowns with Tyler Boyd, and then 1,000 yards. And then defensively, we take a look interceptions wise we had five from uh Uzier, and then sacks we had 15 and a half from vita vea so w and then tackles uh we had tyron matthew and then boom okay so we feel pretty good about that do we have any defensive touchdowns uh no okay well i would at least like to win a playoff game in this last season i'm begging you madden let me get to the divisional round we're playing the texans who are an 80 overall they have home field advantage because they won a division and we did not. The Baltimore Ravens ended up beating us. Okay, here we go, baby. Can we please, please? Yes, 25-21 got out of the first round. W, that's what I'm talking about. So at least we got out of the first round. That's huge. I, if I would have lost again, first round would have been a little upset. But just like that, we did. So now we get to play New England Patriots, who went 14-3. and three. Man, that's a... That's a W by them. JC Jackson. All right. We are playing in Gillette Stadium. It is pretty tough to win there on the road. So I don't know, man. We'll see. Let's go. Let's see if we can make to the AFC Championship. Let's get it. And we won 21 to 7. We are in the AFC Championship. Beat the Patriots at home. Uh, now we get to play Kansas City on the road as well. We have one more player to upgrade here. So let's see if we can get to the Super Bowl. It's now or never. At least we got to the AFC Championship. We are playing a 95 overall offense. So the Chiefs themselves are really good. And obviously they've been to the Super Bowl twice in a row now. So let's see if we can try to disrupt the three-peat. Similar to next week, can we beat the Chiefs? And uh, no, we lost 24 to 21. Damn, that's so unfortunate. So, so unfortunate, man. Well, that is how we're going to end today's video. An AFC Championship loss, 24 to 21. So close to another Super Bowl appearance, but now it's going to be Green Bay versus Kansas City. But at the end of the day, um, I'm getting better at this Madden thing, man. I'm telling you, I feel like I'm starting to I'm starting to understand Madden a lot, and uh, I'm I'm really getting better at it each and every week. So uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. They've been a, they've been a lot of fun for me. But uh, that's it for me. This is Crushables. Hope you enjoyed. Staying. Peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.